Hello, today we're taking a look at the import and export capability which has been added with Morpheus 6.2.0. Import and export allows users to configure onboarded Git repositories including GitHub or GitLab repositories among others as import or export targets for Morpheus constructs including tasks, workflows, and library items. We can set a repository or multiple repositories as a manual or automatic export target to back up useful items from the Morpheus environment as code and then import them into any other Morpheus environment. This is very useful in many scenarios such as importing tested and verified tasks from a test or development appliance into the production appliance or creating one pool of verified library items that many appliances could pull from. Let's take a look at what's needed to set it up. In order to use the import and export features, you're going to need to have Git integrations set up in advance. If you don't have those uh, yet, we can set up new integrations in the administration integration section. For the purposes of this demonstration, I have a GitHub account integrated, um, but we do also allow other generic Git integrations um, and the steps to create any of those integration types, either a generic Git integration or a specific GitHub integration, the steps for creating those integrations are in Morpheus documentation if you do need to set those up, but they will need to be set up in advance. In addition, when uh, 6.2.0 was released, we added a new feature permission. This is labeled admin import slash export, and users will need to have access to the import and export permission in order to use these features. Uh, at the time of upgrade, no accounts, uh, all accounts, or all roles, I should say, will have the import export permission set to none by default. The exception to that would be uh, any users who are in the built-in system administrator role group, which has all rights, but any users who aren't in that right group are going to uh, start 6.2.0 with their import-export permissions set to none. So you will need to go into administration roles, and for every role group that needs access to the feature, you'll need to set admin import-export feature permission to full. Bear in mind, if you're in a tenant as well, the tenant role for the tenant overall is going to need to have access to import export as well in order for any of its filtered down users to have access to that particular feature. But assuming that we do have a Git integration and we have the proper permissions, let's set up a scenario where the import export feature is very useful. In my example scenario here, I have two appliances. One is a test appliance uh, or a dev appliance, and one is the production appliance. So what I do is I create tasks, I create workflows, I create library items in my dev appliance, and then I'm able to export those up to a GitHub repository. In this case, I'm using GitHub for this example. Uh, as I mentioned, other generic Git integrations work fine too. Uh, but in the demo scenario, I create things in my dev appliance, I export them out to a integrated GitHub repository, and then I import them into the production appliance so that my users have access to a clean environment that only has vetted tasks and workflows and library items that have come from uh, extensive testing in my dev environment. So in order to use the import export feature set, that is all done out of the provisioning code section of the UI. So if you go to provisioning and then code, the default tab in that area are repositories. And that's going to show you a list of any uh, integrated repositories uh, that you may have from any of your various GitHub or Git integrations that you already have set up on your appliance. So let's drill into this particular repository. I've created one to house my exported Morpheus items as code, but you wouldn't necessarily have to do that. We could use an existing one. We can even target specific folders within the repository. So if you wanted to use one that maybe you're already storing some Morpheus things in, you can create a new folder path just for your you know, Morpheus constructs as code that are exported if you would like. A number of different ways that you could do this. I opted to create a brand new one. 
um, for demonstration purposes to hold uh, my Morpheus items as code. Now, it is important to bear in mind that if you do create a new repository, it has to have something inside of it. So it can't be completely empty in order for Morpheus to be able to write to it. That can be as simple as just putting a little readme file in there. If you're creating a brand new GitHub repository, they even ask you if you want to go ahead and seed in a readme file at creation time. So if you just go ahead and do that, it doesn't have to have anything in particular in the readme file. It just can't be a completely blank repository in order for Morpheus to be able to write into it. So when I created this repo, I opted for the readme markdown file to get added automatically and it is then good to go as far as Morpheus import and export is concerned. So let's take a look at how we configure a repository to be an import and an export target. For my demonstration in my dev appliance, which is the one we're looking at now, I'm going to configure this repository as a export target. And then in my prod appliance, which we're gonna see in a minute, I'm gonna configure the exact same repository as a import target. So the same GitHub account is integrated on both appliances. And I'm on one side, I'm targeting it as an export target. On the other side, I'm targeting it as an import target. So within my GitHub repository here, I'm gonna click edit and uh, this you know this provisioning code section um, github account viewer has been here for a while but we now have some new options if we edit a repository that has been onboarded into morpheus so we edit the repository and we have these three new options here which are related to import and export so if I pop this open, we can take a look at what we can do. For the export side, we have two options. We can either auto export or we can do a manual export. I'm set up to do a manual export, um, but they actually work pretty similarly. If you have it set up to auto export, then at least at the time of this recording, every four hours, Morpheus is going to automatically refresh the code repository with any changes that might have been made to your Morpheus constructs within the appliance in that time. If you set it to manual, then the code is going to be refreshed uh, every time that you click the export button. So it's not gonna happen on its own, it's only gonna happen every time that you export. So you can decide if you want the repository to be trued up automatically every four hours, or if you wanna be in control of making those exports. When we take a look at the import side in a minute, um, there is no automatic import and that is a security feature or a safety feature i suppose i should say to make sure that we don't accidentally overwrite something we don't want to overwrite so we can uh, set it to manual import um, and then the import export uh, we would choose that if we wanted to set the same repository as both an import and export target on the same appliance so uh, if I wanted to have the ability to push to and pull from the same repository on the same appliance, I could do import export. But in the case of this particular scenario, I want my dev side to be exporting and I want my prod side to be importing. So I'm going to choose manual export. For the path, that allows us to choose the folder path within the repository where we want to store our Morpheus items as code. In my case, I want all of my stuff to be in a top level folder labeled prod. You can actually see in the file viewer down here, there is a prod folder that we can see, but I've just simply entered prod. This can be a longer file path, a more branching file path if you want it to be. In my case, I didn't need that to be. And if we just want them to go into the root of the repository, we can leave this blank as well. For the label filter, uh, we first should discuss the Morpheus concept of labels. Morpheus allows you to label lots of different things, tasks, workflows, library items, tons and tons of other things in Morpheus can be labeled. If we leave this field empty, Morpheus is automatically going to export all supported constructs. So every construct in Morpheus that we support exporting as code to the repository is going to be exported into the repo if we don't fill in anything in this field. In my case, for demonstration purposes, I've chosen a few tasks and workflows and library items that I want to be pushed up to the repo. So I'm saying that I only want items that are labeled with the prod label to actually get grabbed and exported. So this is optional. In my case, I've done this, uh, but by setting this, Morpheus is automatically going to export anything with that label 
as well as any dependencies as well. So for example, let's say I've labeled a workflow with the prod label. Workflows, of course, don't work if all of the dependent tasks aren't present as well. So even if we do have some tasks that are required for workflows, those will get exported as well, even if they don't have the label. Um, but in general, um, only things that are set with that label, as well as any of their dependencies, are going to get exported. And you're actually going to see in this demo some tasks do get exported simply because they are dependencies of some of the other things that I'm exporting. So with the configurations made as far as export, we can go ahead and save that. Now to actually trigger the export, because remember I'm not doing any of this automatically in, in this specific case, I need to go to actions and then export all resources. Now even though it says all, it is still going to honor the label filter that I've set, which we just talked about. So if I click export, that's all that I have to do and it's extremely quick. Uh, we could even take a look on the GitHub side, and if we refresh this, um, we can see that um, you know some things are a little bit older, some things are a little bit newer. I actually haven't made any uh, changes to any of the tasks or anything like that that I'm exporting recently. So when we clicked on the export button, it didn't uh, need to actually uh, put a brand new commit on any of these files. But if I were to say, save over one of my tasks now, and then go back through and click the export all button, you would see that uh, this file will go ahead and update itself. So Morpheus is actually going to take a look when you export and see what all has actually had changes and then it will only um, it will only update files uh, as it needs to uh, based on those changes so we've now exported our uh, items are in the repository as code and we can actually just kind of take a look to see what we get with that if we drill into the prod folder which is where i've indicated that all of my stuff should go uh, let's take a look at a task so we can see that it grabbed five tasks um, let's take a look at one of these and you can see you know, this is how um, you know Morpheus uh, encodes all of the items that you are pushing up to the repository and you can actually drill into these files and see what we see here sometimes we'll see things referred to by UUID sometimes we may actually see the full task config it just kind of depends on the specifics of the uh, of the task or of the library item whatever it may be um, but you can actually drill into those to take a look um, as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and click close here. Now before we jump over to our prod appliance to import, let's just take a quick look at what we should have been exporting. So if I go to automation, um, I'm in the task section. Now remember I've set a label filter for just my prod items, so I have quite a few tasks in here, but only three of them uh, have the prod label on them. So I have an email task, a couple of Python tasks. Some of these are uh, sourced from a, you know, code in a repository. Some of these are actually, uh, you know, just set with localized content. So a number of different uh, tasks and a number of different sourcings for where the config for the task comes from, but all of that is going to work with this particular uh, feature import and export. So I do have, uh, I am specifically exporting three tasks. If we jump over to workflows, I'm sending one workflow. And if we actually edit this, you'll see that one of these is a task that I did have labeled uh, with my prod label for filtering purposes, but two of these don't have that label. And we're actually gonna see that Morpheus will still export these as code and it will still import those into the target appliance because this workflow is dependent on having those um, on having those tasks present in order for the workflow to work. Uh, let's quickly jump into uh, library items as well just to kind of see what we should be expecting there. And if you look in here, you can see that I do have one instance type labeled. Uh, this instance type has a nested uh, layout and it has a couple of nested node types. Those are not labeled, but we're going to see that th those do still get sent um, to be exported and imported as well because they are dependencies on that particular library item. I don't have any 
spec templates set up to be exported, but those are supported as well. And as time goes on, more and more Morpheus constructs will continue to be supported. And you can take a look at Morpheus documentation as time goes on to see a running list of all of the different constructs that we support backing up as code and importing into other appliances. So I think we've taken a sufficient look at what we're sending from the export side. Let's jump over to our, um, this is our prod appliance now. This is a completely separate Morpheus appliance. And again, we're in that same code repositories view, provisioning code repositories, the default tab within that section. Let's drill into the repository. This is the exact same repository. So I have the same GitHub account integrated on both sides and I'm looking at the exact same repository. Let's see how I've configured this. So once again, we do have to set the import export setting and I've set this to manual import. As I mentioned previously, there is no automatic import and that's a safety guardrail just to make sure that we're not overwriting anything that is important. And again, I can target a specific path just like I could when I'm exporting. So, you know, maybe within the same repo, we have lots of different folders where we can export lots of different things. And on the import, we may want to only target a specific path. So we can do that. Again, this is optional. We can pull in anything in the repo, regardless of its <clears throat> directory path, if we want to leave this uh, empty. But in my case, um, I do want to target that folder, even though actually the only exported items are only in that folder. So it wouldn't particularly matter in this case, but I am still going to be explicit in stating which directory I want to target just in case things change in the future. Uh, and then because we're importing, uh, we don't care about this export label filter anymore um, for the import side. So let's go ahead and close that. And in order to import, since we're, we've configured uh, this repository to be an import target, we, we can click the actions menu and now we have an import all resources uh, option there. So let's go ahead and click that. And Morpheus is gonna give us this really nice uh, import preview panel that's gonna tell us how many brand new things are gonna be created, how many things are currently existing, but they have updates how many conflicts and how many things are existing but had no changes so they won't change. So we get a lot of nice information here before we actually click the import button and it gives us a chance to review everything that's gonna happen before we actually overwrite anything. So again, it's all about putting the proper safety guardrails in place to make sure that we don't overwrite anything that is useful or anything that we need. Now, as far as the conflicts, Morpheus is never gonna automatically resolve a conflict. And again, that's a safety guardrail feature. Uh, let's say that we had a hello world task in our prod appliance, and we were also trying to import a hello world task. That's gonna tell us that there's a conflict, two tasks with the exact same name. And we're actually gonna have to fix that on the export side and then re-export in order for that conflict to be resolved. So Morpheus is not gonna automatically resolve conflicts for you. Um, we can safely just ignore any conflicts and Morpheus will just ignore those on the import process. Um, uh, but we would have to fix that again for safety reasons if we did have a conflict, but in this case we don't. So we can kind of roll through here. We can see everything that's going to be updated. We can see everything that's going to be created new. Now, before I actually click the import button for anything to happen, uh, I think it is useful to just kind of take a look in the task section. As you can see, I don't have any tasks in this appliance at all. If I go into workflows, I do have a few. Um, including uh, you know, this one that is going to get created. Let's just go ahead and delete that and we'll have it just created net new via import just to show how um, that will work even though you know it would have been fine to leave that there. It would have automatically pulled in any changes if there were any. I'm just gonna delete that so that we can see the import process creating it though. If we go into library and then blueprints uh, within instance types, you can see that all we have in here are system library items. We don't have any custom library items at all. And uh, we're gonna see that a library item does get created via import. So now that we've seen that, I think it's useful to see that, you know, import is actually creating some things for us. Uh, if we drill into here again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit import all once again. We get the preview screen and actually because I deleted that workflow, we now have uh, zero updates. You know, everything's being created net new um, because I did, uh, or, or unchanged because I did go ahead and delete that. So let's go ahead and click import. This is a very fast process. It's already done. 
Now, if we go into library and then automation, we're gonna see now we have tasks. Remember, we had no tasks before. And it's important to point out, we do have the three that were labeled with prod. So we did want those to get pulled in and Morpheus did honor our filter from the export side. There's lots more tasks in the exporting appliance that would have been sent in if we didn't have the label filter. But our label filter is honored. And within the workflow, we do see that our test workflow is there. And because it had those two additional tasks as dependencies, that's why we see five tasks here rather than three. So Morpheus is smart enough to pull in any of the dependent items that it needs. If we go into library items once again, we can see that now we do have one new instance type. Um, before we only had system instance types, but now we have a custom instance type as well. And if we drill into this, we can see the layout is here. If we look in the labels, you can see I didn't have to label that test layout because it's a dependency, because it's associated, that's gonna come through. If we click into this, it's the same story with the node types that are associated. No labels here, but because they are dependent, uh, those do pull through. Now, if we jump back into the code section, Let's take a look back in our repository again. If we go to import again, Morpheus will actually tell us uh, there's nothing um, that's unchanged. So, um, you know, it, it's able to check within the code repository and it's able to note if there's any changes, if there's anything new or what have you. And we can periodically true up our prod appliance based on whatever we push up from the dev side. Now, real quickly, I do want to mention, uh, as the demo is coming to its end here, I do want to mention that we do have um, all of this content that I've just gone through in this demo uh, written out in Morpheus documentation. Within the provisioning code section of documentation, we do have this import export section. You're going to see a running list of our supported constructs here. That is going to expand as time goes on. At the time that I'm recording this, this is the very first release of the import export feature. So as time goes on, we are going to be able to import and export additional constructs. I do also want to point out before ending the video that a lot of care has been taken with this feature to put safety guardrails around import and export. We want to make sure that nothing useful is being overwritten, nothing is accidentally lost. And so to that end, we've created import and export to ensure that only imported items can be uh, edited or overwritten at all. And what I mean by that is Anything that users create manually within an appliance can't be imported over, as well as anything that's preceded by the system. So an import is never going to overwrite anything you create manually. An import is never going to overwrite anything that the system precedes. All import can do is create brand new items and overwrite things that were initially created by an import as well. So there's no need to fear uh, anything that you've created accidentally getting overwritten. Morpheus is going to um, only mess with things that it has imported um, itself. So no need to worry about anything that you've created manually. Nothing is going to automatically get overwritten or, or anything like that. Another thing I do want to mention is in certain scenarios, uh, you will need to configure some things on the importing appliance in order for things to work correctly. And that's highlighted in this important box here within Morpheus documentation. This is telling us that if we import something that relies on a specific integration being present or on specific sensitive values, we can go ahead and import a reference to a specific integration or to a sensitive value, but it will need to be set up uh, by you as well. We, of course, can't export sensitive values um, or any credentials that would be required to create an integration into repositories, which could potentially be public. So because of that, uh, let's say that we pull down a task that uh, the config comes from a GitHub repository rather than the config being written uh, within the task editor itself. We're going to 
we're going to import a reference to that integration, but you would need to make sure that the integration is existing on the target appliance in order for it to work. So the task will be pulled down and the task will be created just fine. You'll just have to make sure that there's a matching integration there in order for that to work correctly. Similar with sensitive values, let's say that we have a task that uses a, uh, let's say that we have a task that uses a, um, a cipher, a secret cipher value we can um, pull down a reference to that cipher value but you would have to make sure that within cipher on the target appliance that secret value is saved so these are kind of some things that um, you know logically you would assume we probably couldn't do uh, like um, you know pushing secret values up to code repositories and things like that um, but may not be immediately obvious when you're trying to use things that you've imported so that's just a note uh, and other caveats and things to keep in mind are here in Morpheus written documentation. So be sure to check out Morpheus docs on an ongoing basis, especially as time goes on and this feature improves over time. We'll continue to update the written documentation on this feature potentially more frequently than the, than the video demo. So keep an eye on Morpheus docs and we will update supported constructs that we have here. But if you do check out import export and you find it useful, or if you have some points of discussion you want to bring up about it, head over to our user forum. We'd love to hear feedback on import export and how that's working for you and some use cases where that's been useful, as well as maybe any questions that you might have uh, as you're trying to use the feature. So thanks for watching the video and we'll see you on the next one.